Here we go. <clears throat> this is going to include some new stuff and some old stuff. I included this because I wanted to show you how you would put that in your graphing calculator. However, I also need to tell you that I had to do all sorts of totally weird stuff with the measurement size of my screens in order to get something that was actually visible. You're, it's hard to get a good graph from your graphing calculator. However, I did want you to at least see what the graph kind of sort of looks like. And as we go along, I'll point it out. This is really interesting to me, analyzing different kinds of functions, breaking them down into their parts. And you have already spent a lot of time finding the domain of rational expressions, which if I were to erase the f of x, which I'm not going to, but I am going to temporarily white it out. And say if that were the problem, that would be called a rational expression. And you would be asked to find the domain. You've already done that. So all we're doing when we find the domain of a, of a rational function is the same thing as finding the domain of a rational expression. So it's nothing terribly new. Love it. OK. So what do you do? You look at the denominator. And then you write. X squared plus 2X minus 35 and I have to set it equal to zero in order to find the X values that will make the denominator be zero because I have to take those out of the domain. So since there's a wonderful one in front of the X squared, we can factor and factoring is always faster than some of the alternatives. Almost always, I take it back, almost always. Okay, now, since there's a one at the front, I will look at negative 35, kind of move it up here, negative 35, and factor that into two numbers that add up to positive two. Well, that must be seven times negative five. I know that 35 equals 5 times 7. So negative 35 is going to equal, well, one of them has to be negative, not two, but one of them. So if I arrange them like this, when I add 7 plus negative 5, I'll get positive 2 which is what I want. So my numbers are positive seven and negative five. I split apart the X squared into X and X, and then I use my numbers plus seven and minus five. Then I solve each factor well, first I set each factor equal to zero because I certainly can't solve it until then. X minus five equals zero. Now I'm going to solve each of these little equations, minus seven, 
minus 7. So x equals negative 7 and plus 5 plus 5 x equals well I was going to put plus 5 but 5. Those are the two numbers we have to take out of the domain because they'll make that denominator be a zero. We'll have one over zero, which explodes right in our faces. So X cannot equal negative seven and X cannot equal five, but it really is more like, <clears throat> since we're the mathematicians here, X cannot be allowed to equal negative seven and X cannot be allowed to equal five. We have to lock those two numbers out. So I draw my little rudimentary X axis and I put where five is. I declare that to be five and I declare this to be negative seven and then I make little holes. Well, it's not little. Have to make that smaller. Just for the future. OK, but we'll let it go like this. We've got positive. Positive infinity. Positive infinity out here and negative infinity out here. So now my domain is going to be all of these numbers, all of these numbers, and all of these numbers. So the domain is going to be negative infinity to the left side of negative seven, unioned up with the right side of negative seven to the left side of five, unioned up with the right side of five, going all the way to positive infinity. And that's your domain. Now notice that your graph is going to match up with the domain. This is the zero that got taken out, negative seven. And this, one, two, three, four, five. This is the zero that got taken out. Oh, yeah, so notice that just like you have three parts to the domain, we have three parts to the graph. And now we need to build a wall between the parts. That's what the vertical asymptote does. The vertical asymptote, oh, well, both of the asymptotes. And remember, we've got plenty of time. We've got today and tomorrow. So I can spend as much time talking about this stuff as I want. I am so lucky. Hmm. Okay. The vertical asymptotes are something called limits, but they're also something called walls. Wall is not official, but that is, for all intents and purposes, the way they act. I'll show you a vertical asymptote first. Right here. That is a vertical asymptote. I'll accept. It's straight up and down. 
And this. No, this. No. No. There. This is a vertical asymptote. Okay, I'm just going to do the best I can. Right there. These guys act like a wall. Start it. You get the idea, right? But I can't stand it. All right. Here. I'll just spend all day on this. <sighs> there, those are my walls. They're my vertical asymptotes. Right. Vertical asymptotes. Act like walls. Between the parts of the graph. Okay, there's a reason walls are needed. Here you've got your graph. It's coming from out here at negative infinity. And what it wants to do is go like that. But as soon as it crosses this point right there, you're going to have an X coordinate that's negative seven. And, and the Y coordinate, let's say it's two. I don't know what it is. But the X coordinate is negative seven, which means your, well, which means your denominator is going to be zero which means whatever you're going to all this trouble for is going to be exploding. So you don't want that to happen. You've got to have walls. And then we're all happy. Okay. So, what you're really asked for when you have to fill in an answer box is what are the equations of the vertical asymptotes? Well, they're vertical, so they're going to be the equations of vertical lines. And they're going to be the numbers under most circumstances that get taken out of the domain. So you see how, let me get another color. You see how we have X minus seven, X equals negative seven over here, and X equals positive five over here. Those are actually the equations of those vertical lines that act like walls between the parts of the graph. So X equals, uh, X equals negative seven and X equals positive five. Now we go back over here. 
The equation of that vertical line is x equals negative 7, and the equation of this vertical line is x equals 5. And since these vertical lines are vertical asymptotes, those are the equations of the vertical asymptotes. The exceptions occur when you have cancellation on the top and the bottom. Well, where else would you have cancellation? Um, so that one of the factors in the denominator gets canceled out. Then the problem changes a little bit, but I have strived or have striven, not sure which, to make sure that that does not happen in these problems or in your homework. Because frankly, I don't want you to have to deal with it. Okay, so these are probably, I was gonna say the two easiest questions. They certainly are related questions. What is the domain? What are the X, uh, what are the vertical asymptotes? Most of the time, the vertical asymptotes are just the numbers that get taken out of the domain because those numbers would cause the denominator to equal zero. And most of the time, that's the whole story. Do you want to talk about vertical asymptotes? I'm going to draw vertical asymptotes on this graph right here on the big one. Three, three is better. All right, negative seven, got to find that. There it is. All right. I hate it. I was sure I had it that time. and positive five. Well, that's cute. It's good enough. They're not really parts of the graph. They're imaginary walls between the parts of the graph. Okay. Now, having done that, there is also a horizontal asymptote. And these are very rule bound. The horizontal asymptote, the whole idea of it is that it's a tendency of the graph. When the graph, let's go back to our graph out here. When the X values start getting out at negative infinity, and at positive infinity. So on the left side and the right side of the graph, but not in the middle, what is the tendency of the graph out on the left and out on the right? 
That's what the horizontal asymptote is. It's not a hardcore deal. Your graph absolutely, totally will not cross a vertical asymptote. On the other hand, in the middle, graphs have been known to cross horizontal asymptotes because they're not the big dangerous deal that vertical asymptotes are. They're a tendency. Horizontal asymptotes are. Okay, so this is our these are going to, this is going to be our horizontal asymptote, but it depends on rules. Like this. So we go back to what we've already talked about regarding polynomials. Namely, the degree of a constant is zero. The degree of a polynomial is the highest, the biggest exponent when you're only dealing with one variable. The rules change a little bit when you have multiple variables, but I've tried to avoid those as much as possible in this class. If you take calculus, you will encounter multiple variables. Okay, but anyway. Horizontal asymptotes depend on the degree of the numerator and the denominator. So here we have a case where the degree is zero. The degree of a constant, without a letter, right? That's what a constant is. The degree of a constant is always zero. And the degree of this polynomial is two. So what? This is so what? The degree of the numerator is lower than the degree of the denominator. So, when when the degree of the numerator In other words, the top. Is lower than the degree of the denominator. The bottom. Lower than. The exact, when this happens, when the degree of the numerator is lower than the degree of the denominator, the horizontal asymptote is automatically the x-axis.
the x-axis has an equation. It has an equation like every other line. All horizontal lines have y equals a number, just like all vertical lines have x equals a number. I should have said have the form, but you get the idea. Well, the x-axis has the is is sideways, it's horizontal. So it really is a horizontal line. It has the equation y equals zero. Because y equals zero everywhere on the x-axis. So that's going to be our horizontal asymptote. Because the degree of the numerator is lower than the degree of the denominator in this particular problem. Let me pull this back. You now have a frame for drawing each part of the equation. Um, uh, each part of the uh, rational function. See? You have this part, and this part, and this part, and this part, actually, because let me draw, oh, yeah, let me draw. the horizontal asymptote on, on here. We actually need to make that bigger, don't we? It's hard to tell sometimes. Not that big though. Okay. There's your ha. Ha, ah, whoa, all right. Ha, <laughs> And these are your vase. And they form a frame for your graph. There is another rule that you have to know. Let's do that first, since we're providing background. And we've got all day tomorrow, all day. We've got an hour tomorrow. Okay, here, look at here. Looky here, that's what my grandmother used to say. My mother's family is from Mississippi. Notice, when you don't see, you already know this, but when you don't see an exponent, the exponent is one. So this is x to the one, and this is x to the one. The top and the bottom have the same degree, degree one.
here's the other rule. I'll just get it written out now. When the degrees Here comes George. When the degrees of, come on Georgie. When the degrees of the numerator and denominator When the degrees of the numerator and denominator are equal, so 2, 2, or 3, 3, or 4, 4, or 1, 1. Uh, when the degrees of the numerator and denominator are equal. Uh, and saying this is so difficult. All right, well, not for a, not for an English major, but for me. Um, when this happens, the ha is the ratio of the leading coefficients. I have just learned I'm going to have to type this out ahead of time. The ha is the, the ratio, ratio, not on there, is the ratio of the, let me make this bigger so you can see. The ha is the ratio of the leading coefficient of the numerator and denominator. So what that means in this case, In this case, the ha, just put a little note in there, the ha is going to be y equals, because it's a horizontal line, 3 over 3, which equals 1. So the ha is going to be the line y equals one. So there are actually three different rules, but the third one is just so easy. If it's not one of these two cases, you don't have a ha. You don't have a horizontal asymptote. And that's possible too. There are other kinds of asymptotes that if you take more math, you will, you will um, talk about them. Anyway, the equation of, of this problem, because the numerator has a lower degree than the denominator, 
is going to be the x-axis, which is y equals zero. I just wanted you to know there's another rule. Now, before you go, I'm going to write how you find the x-intercept and the y-intercept. To find the x-intercept, set the numerator the top. Set the numerator equal to zero and solve for the variable. If there is no variable, like in this case, it's just a one. Say this succinctly. No variable. Means No x-axis, uh, no x-intercept. So guess what, gang? We don't have an x-intercept for this problem. And finally, the y-intercept, we'll put it all together tomorrow. But your y-intercept, there's a rule for that. Too. I mean, not a written out rule. Your y-intercept is always what you get for f of zero. Now, this is a code that means you're going to put a zero in every x. So if we have that, function, we're going to put a zero in that and a zero in that, which is going to give us one over negative 35, which is negative one over 35. But that's not the answer. Remember, x-intercepts and y-intercepts are points, so they have to be written as ordered pairs. See, I let x equal zero, so I have to put a zero in for x. And then negative one over 35 is your y-intercept. Now, let me point out before you go that negative 1 over 35 is such a small number. The calculator writes it like this. It, this doesn't touch the bottom of the x-axis. It just gets really close on the negative side. So that means it never goes above Negative one, uh, negative one over 35 on the y axis. So it never gets all the way to, um, to the x axis. Just thought I'd share. Okay, tomorrow we get all this data together and we graph this for ourselves.
we're going to continue on. The homework for tonight talks about um, um, finding the vertical asymptotes. So you can now go all the way through it and find the vertical asymptotes. And find the domain. That's what you're doing tonight. Domain and vertical asymptotes. But if you're in the mood, you could start on the second set, the one for tomorrow, and that talks about all of this. Okay, stay around if you have questions. I'm just going to pick up here tomorrow. <laughs>